Sorry about that. All right, so I want to show you today what I was doing right now with this little interface that I have, which is an Arcos internet tablet. And it's not that hard. The main thing I want to showcase today is this device that I just finished a few hours ago, which enables you to connect any interface, iPod, iPhone, iPad, Wii Remote, whatever you have it, like Android, and connect it with Ableton Live through UDP or OSC. So let's do it. Um, this is the thing I want to show you. This is the little deal here. So it's this little patch in Max for Live. And here it is. This is it. You're going to be able to see it. Um, it's online. You can download it. And I'm going to show you how to prepare this stuff, how to get it working on your computer. All right, first thing is you download it right. So let's open up a track. Imagine you just got it right now. Boom, you paste it. There you go. You have it. Now you're just like, what the hell is this thing? All right, so the first thing you need to do to prepare it is get your, com your interface Again, whatever you have, it has to communicate through UDP. First thing is making sure it's going through to the computer. And that is close your firewall, put it down, and make sure your interface is connected to the same network as your computer. That means like connected to the same wireless or connected directly to your computer. Shut down firewall, that's step two. So it should be going through to your computer. And now the next step is the third step is making sure that it's in port 9000. I'm using Touch OSC, by the way, and Touch OSC already has most of the stuff set up. It's port 9000. So make sure you're using port 9000. And now open it up. You're going to see here. It looks complicated, and it actually is a little bit, but I'm going to explain it and help you out. So again, it's receiving from port 9000. You see the little numbers here. They're changing, supposedly. And the thing is, it's going to be receiving, and all of these guys, you have to now, the fourth step is change these little values here. They have to match your input. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm using an Arcos, and I'm using Touch OSC. Um, if you're using Touch OSC, you're going to have the same values. If not, I don't know. Change them. Find out what is what you need to parse your information. That's all you got to do from inside. Once you have it working, you got to... Um, once you have the input going, and you're going to notice this little red dot is going to be red, flashing red if it's receiving stuff, is scale it. Because you're going to be receiving these numbers that are not related to Ableton Live. Like at the moment, this is 0 0.10, uh, sorry, negative 10. And this is 10 from Touch OSC. And what you got to do is scale it to make sense inside Ableton Live. So I'm going to put this to 0 and 127 so this is the output all right so now it's going from zero uh, let's see zero yeah there you go so this is zero and now this is 127 all right let's do another example let's go from zero to one all right so now this is zero and now this is one again another one let's go from negative 127 to 127 all right so this is negative 127 and this is 27. So what I'm getting is one of the inputs only. I'm using the X acceleration. Um, you can use other things. And for example, what you got here is, I, mean, I can use, I'll use the Y. I'll put it to zero to 127, which is the normal MIDI standard. Same thing here. All right, so you got the input. Your computer's receiving. Ableton Live is receiving the information from your interface. Now it's mapped, it's scaled. Now, how do you control device? This is the easiest part. So once you have it, the way this works is this device controls the next device. And what this means is, let's get one little thing here right next to it, to the right. It's going to immediately, well, once you click the button, recognize that there's a device there. And, and what it does, look at this, it automatically maps you up to the, to the device that's there. And now macro one, two, and three are mapped to my, um, to my OSC. Look how easy that is. Let's get three going on as well. So zero to 127. And boom, look at that. You have all these parameters flowing. Um, 
And of course, the musical part is to actually put some stuff inside this. Um, like, what can we get here? Let's get some auto pans or whatever, some random stuff. Um, and map this to marker one, auto pan, uh, let's the face, the mounts. Let's get the face, marker two, and this to macro one. All right, so look, it's controlling all this stuff at the same time. Yeah, and the cool thing is that you don't need to have this in only one. Dude, you can have this thing in like a bunch of uh, different, as long as the computer doesn't crash, I don't know if it will or not. Um, yeah, works again, so there you go. So you can put it, you can play it into as many tracks as you want, the same input, or you can actually even change the input inside. And always different with different scales and different mappings and different devices attached to it. So imagine I have the beat repeat here. Let's click here. Boom. Look at this. You already have all the information for the beat repeat. Beat, uh, turn it on. The grid. A DK. You don't like this? All right. Let's get another one. Let's get the filter delay, for example. All right. Click here. Look at this. It already has all the details of the filter delay. And it's going to be mapped exactly to all of these little guys here. So that's the quick thing that I wanted to show you. If you have any questions, let me know. You probably will. I went kind of fast through this, but it's really just to give an introduction. Uh, some more advanced people are going to be able to catch on to this. If not, just send me an email or we can Skype later and I'll show you how this, uh, this thing actually works. But um, all right, now, if you have any questions, let me know again. All right, take it easy. Thanks.